and withdrawal pattern, defend <coughs> withdrawal pattern, criticize, pursue pattern. Right? You see those patterns? And um, uh, Valerie will talk more about those types. So attachment behaviors in place to get a response. Right? So those attachment behaviors are primed by the emotions. So we have attachment behaviors primed by emotions that are can look like demand withdrawal. Or can look like defend withdrawal. And we have our own unique pattern of engagement. So I could sit, I could look at you and your relationship, and I could say you are in a pattern, an intrapersonal pattern of defend withdrawal. Right? So you defend, you withdraw. Or you demand, you withdraw. So the couples, one is demand, the other is the withdrawal. Right? Or you have the one's a criticizer and then the other is a pursuer. Okay. So we can pick up on the pattern, then we can identify what emotion is driving that pattern, right? And keeping the pattern rigid. So intensified emotional arousal and main, and maintains attachment and security. So as these emotions are driven, attachment and securities are merged more and more. How they fight is more important than what they fight over. So it's the pattern of how of engagement that matters more than what they are fighting about. That's why we don't worry about trash and tater tots and whatever else they want to fight about, right? We don't worry about the conversations that they come in with because it's not about what they're fighting about, it's about, it's about what's underneath. What's more important is how they are fighting with each other. Because how they fight with each other repeats itself over and over again, and that's where they get stuck. And so we understand, and like Sue, like I was just described, we understand that what Sue saw was patterns. Everything that felt chaotic and needed individual answers, like the token economy of having a trash out, we no longer needed individual answers if we could identify patterns. And these patterns were consistent across lots of couples. Right? And they're embedded in the dance of lots of couples. And so this kept the couple stuck. These patterns make a safe emotional engagement necessary for secure bonding impossible. So we can't securely bond and or attach appropriately because the patterns are threatening the bonding <coughs> and the safety. Right? So we can't even break out of what we're in because the actual pattern is thre threatening the very things that we want. So I want to feel loved by you, but the way I'm, I'm protesting not feeling loved by you is keeping me from actually feeling loved by you. So it's never safe enough to feel that love. It's never safe enough to take the risk of vulnerability to experience that love because I don't feel safe with you because I'm defending myself and I'm driven by fear and anger which keep me in a rigid, restricted, constricted way of engagement. When you say demand withdrawal, is that an individual's pattern or the couple's pattern? It can do either one. It can okay. be a couple pattern or an individual pattern. So some people demand and they withdraw. And some people stay in a demanding position. Some people defend and then attack. So it can be an individual and or a pattern. So we'll identify both. Yeah, good question. Okay, so the goals of the EFT are to access and expand and reorganize these key emotional responses. So we're going to access the emotional responses, we're going to expand them into the cycle, and then we're going to um, create a shift in partners' interactional positions and patterns. So position is, <laughs> pattern is, right? Uh, Valerie, come up here. Okay, ready? Yeah. All right. So <laughs> you go, go like this and stand firm. Yeah, right there. Okay. Position, right? My position is withdrawal. Mm -hmm. Partner about defending, right? Mm -hmm. Her position is attacker. What goes on between us? So the space between us is pattern. So as long as I stay in this position, I perpetuate the pattern, right? So if I stay in the position of withdrawn and defending, and she stays in the position of attack, right? As long as she's attacking, what do I need to do? Withdraw. Withdraw and defend, right? I'm protecting myself. And then uh, the more I withdraw and defend, the more she attacks, right? So here we are, we're stuck. I have a position, she's got a position, and now we have created a pattern. So we're talking about trash. She is pointing at me and going, why don't you take the trash out? And I go, oh, brother. Right? And then I, when I go, oh, brother, then what she say? He still takes the trash out, right? And so she's, she's not protesting me taking the trash out. She's protesting this. He doesn't help me. He doesn't care about me. Right. She's protesting my position, which is impacting the pattern. And so the rigidity is that goes around and around. So then we come up with another topic. 
right? Whatever it might be. It didn't help with the kids. It didn't help with the kids. He doesn't oh. know the night. Mm -hmm. So they could do this, for, we could do this forever with 50,000 new topics and it never changes. It never changes. Position, pattern. What do you think position is influenced by? Attachment, Attachment history, right? Attachment history, right? So I, so she's my mom, and my mom is screaming at me, and what did I do? So then, when my wife screams at me, what do I do? It's a familiar position. I know this position. I don't have a template for this. Right? I, I'm wired in this particular way to respond because this is how I know to survive. And I don't have a template to go. And if I were to turn, and she's going like this, and I were to face her, I would interrupt what? The pattern, exactly, right? Because the pattern doesn't stop, it's rigid as long as I'm like this. But if I turn and I face her, then all of a sudden it impacts the pattern, which then influences her what? Her reaction. Her reaction, which is her? Attachment position, right? So we're a system, right? So if I turn, I'm going to, at the very least, confuse her. Right? She can't stay in her normal pattern. If I turn and I face her, then she's got to figure out, either she's going to get really aggressive and turn me back around, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and teach me a lesson for turning back around. Or she's going to have to adjust her own comfort level for me turning, which is really interesting because some people that are attackers, they're, they're going, come here, and as soon as you come, like, okay, come here. Well, I'd say therapeutically sometimes too when this happens, it's completely disorienting for yeah. the attacker. They don't even know what to do when finally the spouse turns. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, and then the spouse turns and they go, what are you doing? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why are you, you know, are you performing for, just for the therapist? Yeah, are you doing this for the room? <laughs> right? Or they, yeah. like, they look confused yeah. and uh, um, Sue Johnson calls it the dog and reporter look. <laughs> when someone changes their position, you go, yeah. you, you know when you put the yeah. reporter and the dog goes, right. <laughs> it's the dog and reporter look. It's like, this is not you. <laughs> this is very confusing. That's also the look we give when you're growing your own neurological pathways. It makes sense of your experience that you don't have. Right? So, as long as I'm like this, and she's like that, we're both in our positions. And it goes around and around and around, and then we can't get out of our positions, right? And we can't get out of our pattern until we shift our position. And we stay in our patterns because I'm in what motion? That's not the motion. Fear. This is my fear. that's my behavior. Oh, fear. 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 I'm in fear and she's in anger. anger. Right. We're stuck, right? Fear, anger. It's driving our positions and our patterns. And so how do I get out of can I get out of this if I stay in fear? No. Can she get out of that if she stays in anger? No. That's why we move from secondary motion to primary motion. Right? Which then primes a different position. And then influences a different pattern. That's okay. the job of the therapist. That's the job of the therapist to do that. Yep. Okay, so, so we're shifting an interaction in the positions of the patterns that will be influenced by the attachment history. And by the way, if I do this, I've done it a thousand times. So how hard is it to shift? It's really hard, right? It's very hard. Now here's the thing, I can be in session and I can have someone shift when there's no threat. Right? Because my attachment system isn't activated. What attachment response is this of the two types? And the compounding stress, you memorize this, right? It's avoided for sure. What strategy is this? Deactivating strategy. What's her strategy? Hyperactivating strategy, right? Does this all make sense come together, right? So she's hyperactivator, she's angry, I'm a deactivator, I'm afraid, right? And I'm an avoider, and she's a. Pursuer. Pursuer, and she's also what type of attachment style problem? Anxious. Anxious. Anxiety drives her, right, to attack based upon, right, her own unmet attachment needs. And so she is driven to attack because she's, a, she's anxious. If she's, she's avoidantly anxious or just anxious or preoccupied, she's going to be attacking, right? And the, and the avoider is going to be doing the withdrawing. Sometimes it's defend, and sometimes it's withdraw, right? Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Sign it all together can I say, for can I say you. just one quick thing? Um, one thing that I tell my couples, if you ever are able to get them to turn to one another and have a successful moment, is to just give them some preparation that they're probably going to be very unsuccessful at home. 
yeah. for the first little while, but you can have a lot, you gotta have some very, very solid successes in the office before it's able to translate into mm -hmm. successes at home. And then they don't feel really crappy that they can't do it at home. Yeah, right, yeah, totally. You know? And I think too, um, the one thing that Sue didn't add to her theory, but that Diana Bush added was metatherapeutic processing. Right, lots of that. Lots of that, after successful enactment, after yes. successful shift, right? Disrupting that. the position and the pattern, then you talk about that. You double, you double back and talk about what was therapeutic about the shift. That makes sense. So we're going to actually make logical sense about the enactment. So we go into the experience with the motion. We do the new dance, and then we step out of it and we reflect on it. And that's the metatherapeutic processing of the event. And that's right to left brain integration, just right. to tie last week's lecture together with this week's. Look, it's all coming together. Yeah. Woo. Right? I'm more excited than you guys are. Yeah. It's all coming together. <laughs> hey. We're still going. Don't worry. Yeah, great. <laughs> So you're fostering the creation of a secure attachment bond between partners through the creation of new interactional events that redefine the relationship. So you have all these events, right, that have defined the position and the pattern, right? So a distressed couple is stuck in their rigid, inflexible pattern that's driven by anger and fear. And so we're stuck, right? So we're going to soften them, and we're going to soothe in our actions. We use empathy and self-disclosure as three of the means in which to move them out of fear and anger soften them towards new positions and new patterns. By the way, when we were born, what position were we in? Secure. Oh, like this? Yeah. We're like this? No, we're, yeah, we were like this. This is our, our created position, mm -hmm. right? And then life happens. And we go like this to our parents, and our parents go, and then we go, right? And we create a new attachment position based upon everything we described about attachment theory. Right, but our first is reach, and that's what what um, what uh, part of the central nervous system is this? It's parasympathetic, but it is not dorsal vagal, ventral vagal, right? So we're born with the ventral vagal reach, and then we move into what is the dorsal vagal, right? Dorsal vagal or Sympathetic, yes. Sympathetic around the right fight. Right, so our central nervous system is also playing itself out in the rigidity of the dance because fear and anger ignite what? The central nervous system is ignited 